because they're going to be off sale as of tomorrow or something. Um, if you scroll down on the stream, you can see the shop and you can get yourself a um, limited edition balls out mug from the This Is Zoot Twitch channel. It is available until tomorrow. I'll maybe say it once later, but let's go into the game, guys, because we're live. We've got Buxter, we've got Picava, Doom versus Visor. I think I'd maybe give an advantage to Doom slightly. But if you look at the players involved, uh, dude, I don't know. This is both of these players are going to be fighting for points throughout this league. It, it's it's tough to call. Boxer hears rockets coming towards him. It's like I don't want to get spammed around the corner. Hmm, tasty. And that's not just the hot chocolate. Gonna see him in a second. Not taking too much damage. And these players are not trading out a lot. I wanna see if they break away. I wanna see the damage exchanged in the first minute. Okay. Damage 65 by Picava, 129 by Buxter. That's the first minute of play. And it's not gonna be added anymore. They'll break out from this. And we've got major items just spawning in a second. I think that would have been Picava double. He didn't double back, actually. He committed to this. Now that Boxer knows he's done that, he's going to try and pressure the Mega as soon as he can. All rockets miss, apart from the last one. That's a really good combo, actually. Picava's in a lot of trouble. First blood should be decided. Messy, but it didn't really matter. There was virtually no way that he loses out on that kill. I think if I were to predict at the beginning, right at the beginning of the series... I think I would expect Picava to win maybe 2-1, but it would be close. I feel something like 53-54% in favor of Picava. Two rails in a row, dude. Picava's going to be hating that a lot. Nice little double jump he does at the end. This is difficult for Picava to stay alive with. He does actually manage to navigate his way over towards the bounce pad. I was not expecting him to do it as simply as that. Oh, Bucks actually got surprised at the fact that he appeared. I think he just heard the piercing sight being used, so there's no point moving for a few seconds. Okay, that's really surprising he did that, because that would have been right at the back end of it. I don't know. Maybe he even looked at the clock to time it. I think he waited almost exactly five seconds behind the corner. It was interesting. I was right on the edge of the audio distance that he hears the piercing sight. Oh, that was so close, that, that follow-up rail. So much damage, man. Bacava couldn't do anything there. He couldn't get through the teleporter because he's bounced away awkwardly. Box is playing a nice game right now. I think he realized that the items were going to be synced, so he looks for some kind of damage. I think he noticed that he ran away, so Boxer should have perfect timing of the heavy armor. And now he knows that he's going over to rockets. So he's going to punish him a little bit now. LG on LG. He should have the edge. But he's not going to face back over to the rocket that could have killed him. Now for Buxter, it's all about just securing some control. This is the perfect weapon choice. The cover gets a bit closer, so he opts for something else. It does make himself not railable. That almost was disastrous. But you can see that Picava now using the ability. He's uh, not holding on to uh, his natural stack quite. Bucks just still with an advantage. And now the advantage is uncertain. I don't think he can actually go for heavy anymore. He needs to, he needs to hit a rail. In order to go for heavy, he has to hit a clean rail. And he's not done that. 
And now it's just, yeah, get out here. He's checking to see if there's a rocket jump so he can defend a, a bit on the angle. That's not the case. Here's the bounce pad. And now no need to really challenge the upper angle until he's stacked up a little more. Five minute warning. Hey, Canapox is in chat. No, well played, dude. I'm looking forward to seeing more of your games, man. You had an exciting start in the first map. I want to see more where it came from. And I think letting Athena go through on Blood Covenant was also pretty dangerous too. In my, in my honest opinion. Just trickling some of that damage. This is really good. Yeah, Picard is hurting so much right now. He needs to get out of here. Oh, that all oh, he gets the rail anyway. I thought the double jump almost worked for him. And Picava's going to get spawn fragged over here. No, you do not want to push down there. Boxster's playing great at the moment. Like, Picava's level is not bad at all. He's frequently going. Does anyone want to play some sets? Practice 1v1 at everybody on some of the practice channels. All good, kind of Pox. I'll definitely be looking out for your, uh, your matches and results. Good timing on that. This isn't all set, by the way. If Pekawa can get himself a kill in the next minute, minute and a half, then there's chan a chance. That was at a brilliant spam rail through the teleporter. But Pekawa's been walking into so much of the spam that it's just been allowing Buxter to convert some control. I am worried, though, that Buxter didn't challenge on the heavy. It has a let Pekawa get free items that this could be a challenge for him. The thing is, Buxter has been so damn good at hitting those rails, those initial rails. The thing is, there's definitely some instances where I would say it's dangerous to not try and punish on items. God damn, that rail was close. He hits the rail after Mega's taken, which is another sort of crippling blow for Picava. He just gets the light. He loses out on another 90 click of health and armor. That's, again, massively painful. A drop wouldn't be smart, but it doesn't matter, really, when you're hitting stuff like that. I'm uh, tempted to call this GG. Bucks has just been really dominant here. Slightly sloppy LG, but um, only because I hold it to high regard. I mean, that's GG. Picard le leaves. That's it. I mean, most people call GG in those instances, but Picard is just like, we'll do the next. He's not Russian. I just can't really do a Polish accent. There was a point way back then that Picard rivaled Razy. Ah, I mean... Yeah, but no. Um, there was DreamHack 2017. Um, Picava beat Razy in groups. But apart from that, I don't think Picava's ever really had an edge on him. <laughs> He's playing visor close enough. I like it. Uh, looks like we're going to next. These guys are ready to go. Boxed with a very clean window on Blood Covenant. That's nice for him. Uh, Molten Falls does look like it's Picava's map pick. Picava at the start of Quake Champions was very good. Um, but when everybody else was picking up the practice as hard as him, he struck... Like, P Picava's a player who's... Who's got good skill, but he's always struggled to get across a certain line in progression where other players are managing to make those next steps forward. People like Wenger have managed to get past those those kind of learning points. It, it's very difficult because you kind of plateau in skill level as you get better and better. 
And in order to increase your skill, it's it's just tremendously hard. High needled. <laughs> Good luck, face. But in terms of duel, I don't know who's peaked more between Picava or Buxter. Maybe narrowly Picava? I'm gonna esports earnings these guys. Round begins in three, two, one. All right, game is starting though, so I should get into it. Has begun. Picava. They're both very similar. Picava's got like four hundred more dollars in earnings. It's very, very close between them. But I'm going to go over to Picava to start with. It's his map. His moment. It took a moment getting to the LG. And look at that Buckster. Doesn't even go to the heavy straight away. He pushes out and makes sure that Picava is far, far away from where he is. And Buxter even gave himself time to challenge onto the Mega Health, so... Really dominant rotation from Buxter on uh, the second set of big items. Picava, though, does have the Ghost Walk. He doesn't have rockets, but he can play the information game a little bit. And he's able to get out. So note that he's using Ghost Walk before he's super low on health. If he challenges on Mega, though, that's going to be pretty insane. I think Buxter is assuming that Pekawa wouldn't go to Mega because he was seen taking it last time. Now dual wheels been used. Dangerous for Buxter, but he does have did have a lot of armor behind him. And he gets rid of all the overstack that uh, Pekawa had for the health. Also back, he does hit an okay rocket. A heavy was just taken. Hmm, it just makes it interesting, actually. Box is going to have the ability up sooner. It's, it's close right now. Hard to pick a favorite. That combo was, was ripe and ready for you. The drop down's good. Box has got to get out of there. Way better damage in that fight, obviously. And Box has got to just let this one go. Doesn't even get a light. I mean, Picava's got to close this one out. I think he needs to. He needs to rush down LG. So even if he did, I think uh, Buxter was already out there. That's not a bad read at all over at rail. He goes there quite early, and that means get out. Oh, you might even die actually. Oh, the rail closer. Beautiful. Knows exactly where he is. And now to punish a bit. So he'll get uh, no overstack basically from it. He's just got whatever he spawned with plus the light. It's basically just like having a fresh spawn. Yeah, Sonika. So I'm actually really hoping we can catch a silence up game later. I'm super keen to see what his shape is like. So dual wield is used. I really think Picava could have gone back in there, but he's opting for control. When you've only got a one frag advantage, you need to make good of the opportunities you have to get a kill. And he had Buxter super low. Looks like Bucks is offering him an angle and that this is going to be a, a frag anyway. But you never know, that opportunity might not have presented itself once more. And it could still be 1-0. Yeah, this is the first week, Motor Crew. We've got eight weeks of Challenger League. I'm going to try and cast as many of the weeks as possible. I won't be at um, all the Pro League runs, though. There'll definitely be a whole bunch that I won't be at. Rocket. Oh, he caught him so weak. Oh, my God. He's just flailing around of the LG going, you're low, you're low, you're low. 
And Buxter cleans it up. I don't dislike this dual wield. He doesn't know if Pikawa's going to make an aggressive attack, so he has dual wield out ready. Oh, the machine gun. He couldn't get back any further, and even so, you could see how much stack of uh, Pikawa had anyway. Three to one. Yeah, I think Buxter committing to the Mega was a bad idea. Just staying from a distance would have been better. That's one of the kind of few mistakes that we've seen from him. Yeah, Sonica, everything played out today. It's best of three through an entire single elimination bracket. Going from start to finish. Follow-up rocket, plus 50 damage. Buxter has a nice stack, though. Especially after that Mega's been taken. I like the delay there. I knew when he was going through. If he gets railed now, he's dead. Woo, that's close. Buxter should still get himself on heavy. This is a hard game. Hard game for Picava. He's got a lead, but it's fragile. Taxes round of 16 and onward is a proper high-level tournament now. Yeah, I agree, man. It's quite cool. There's a mishmash of lots of different things where we can see some up-and-comers and interesting names in the early parts of the tournament. And as we go later and later, we kind of get the big boys playing. The car was in danger. Huge amount of danger. He actually had his ability ready, but looks like he didn't want to commit to that. You don't want to die with it down. The heavy's up in a second. Dual will is still dangerous, actually. Take your time over on those rails. I wonder if he's going to attack Mega from Lightning inside. Okay, the damage he's done is insane. He's going to get heavy. And then picava has got to run, run, run. Because he doesn't have... He's got 15 seconds until his ability is what I'm trying to say. Buxton needs to cover these points. Okay, two hourglasses gained. Ability now back for Picava. Recover's not really trying to get control unless Buxter overcommits to a fight. You won't you, you shouldn't use your ability to get on an item in this instance. It does damage, but it's right before an item, so he knows that it's not going to lead into anything particular. And that's a lot of damage right there. Even that rail itself, considering the amount of stack that he has, he can't commit to anything. And now it's just leave. Mega should go to uh, to Buxter comfortably. Oh, that rail there might have gotten the kill. I'm not 100% sure. He knows he's there. Chase it. He's committing so hard to this. Oh, Vicarva's just managed to jump over. Gets himself the kill. He's going to get heavy from this. Buxter committed really hard. He he's going to get the return frag anyway. Now right off the spawn, he's also inherited all of the weapons that he needs. Oh my god! He could have died just then. There's two 25s that he's not going to them. Is the light armor up? This is really close. Really, really close. He's chasing through anyway. Well, he needs to go to the some items. There's no way he can equalize things with a stack like that. It's going to be light armor. And he needs to try and somehow pressure Picava off this. I think that... I'm not sure if it's GG, but this is... Like, game is super hard. If he can get any kind of free damage... Oh, he might get himself on here. This could change things a little bit. 
And that passive helps a lot. This isn't over. This is not over. Aljama back. He's going to get Mega. And then he even can rocket jump. And Picard, he knows exactly where Picava is. So this is dangerous. He's got to force out that ghost walk right now. Trying to close the gap. He has found him. Pekava's going to use it. All right. He has to guess correctly. He just heard him go through the teleporter. 10 seconds. Oh, no. He messed up the jump a bit. But he's found him again. Rocket. Oh, Picava's still going to take him down, man. <laughs> he's going to throw himself off the edge and will keep that one frag advantage. Really damn close there. I was scared for Picava because he was staying so close for such a long time. I mean, there was definitely a world there where Buxter comes back. And I, I actually think that the rocket jump probably would have made the comeback even harder. I think it had to happen over at that rail room right at the end. That's the first really good game we've had though today though. I'm enjoying this. Uh, next is Ruins, guys. Buxter's playing Aizen. And Picava is playing Ranger. Yo, Roman. I think that Buxter overall looks a little more solid. So, although my prediction at the beginning was Picava, I think Buxter's going to win this last map. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Anything can happen. Remember, whoever wins goes through to the next round is probably playing versus Cypher. Whoever loses is going to have to wait till next weekend. Cypher's currently playing versus <coughs> uh, against uh, Anessi. Which actually in itself could be a fairly interesting game. Unless he's very, very good on, on public servers. But we're going to stick along this kind of like line of games. We're going to watch this, obviously, this last map between Buxer and Picava. And then we're going to go straight over, I hope straight over or soon over, towards the winner versus, sus I suspect, Cypher. Let's move in there, guys. It's 1-1. One, one. Buxer, Picava. Aizen Ranger. Fight. We are on Buxter to start with. He's got the heavy spawn. Picava Mega whenever he wants it. And rockets. Super standard. Trying to punish some of those uh, items taken. Gets rid of some health over stack. Finds him again. Uh, Picava. Looks like we might get a restart. I mean, I don't want to assume anything, but I'm guessing we're getting a restart. Uh, do exclamation mark bracket. Uh, joke. 3RQC. Joke here. Will be a little bit annoying for Buxter because it happened straight after getting a good uh, opening rail on Picava. Like his start was definitely a bit better, but um, I'm imagining Picava is going to leave this lobby in a second, and we'll have to reinvite him soon. It says he's in game at the moment, so I'm guessing that's going to refresh soon. When does the winner get the chance to play for the pro league spot? So at the end of the eight weeks of Challenger League, um, we should know by then who the top two point scorers are in each region. And the top two of the Americas and the top two of EU CIS will get taken to Luca uh, for the Comic and, Luca Comic and Games. And they will play respectively against the bottom two of each region in order to qualify into the Quake Pro League. Yo, what's up, Rick? <laughs> the car is mad at everything in life. Some things never change. Uh, 
hello hippy do all the weeks count or just the best six to eight weeks or something so you get points overall but the thing is points uh you gradually get more and more points the later the weeks go on so for the uh, uh let me see if i get it right the first two weeks first place gets 100 points the second two weeks First place gets 150. The third two weeks, you, first place gets 200. And I think the last two weeks, the winner gets 300. And the points that going that trickle down from like first, second, third, fourth, so on, so on, they also kind of increase. Prepare to fight. So what's the most amount of points you could feasibly get? Round begins. 200, 200, 1,000, 1,300. One. Like fight. if the same person wins every single week, they could have. 1500 points by the end of it, I think. He figures out what Picava's up to, so he's gonna dive over quickly for heavy. He's not done too badly there. Really would love a little extra damage, but Buck's just been patient. Oof, we didn't quite see him move over there. Man, both of them hit some pretty disgusting stuff there. Heavy will eventually get taken by Picava. Stacks are even. Minute in, LG taken. Oh, Picava hits two in a row. Okay, this is big, big swing. Oh, the rocket jump up. What a perfect shot as well from him. He's like, I'm going to finish this off. I was talking about this earlier. Building opportunities and being able to finish the job on them. Such an important skill in this game. And I think Bakawa demonstrating uh, his capabilities. I thought that was very nicely done by him. Buckster will retain 100-100, which isn't awful. But he's going to be at a slight disadvantage. Rail, close range. Somehow doesn't manage to take that much damage. And Buckster's actually got himself into a position to take the mega health. So we should have a little swapsies now on major items. and Unless Buxer decides to go really balls out now. He is jumping down all the way, actually. He's going to push him right off. His timing's not bad, but Picava has stolen away that heavy. He used the orb in order to do that. I like the move from both of them, actually. Buxer's attack, Picava's defense. Pretty spot on. Definitely was a chance for Buxer to tie it up, and he's going to find it regardless. He hits the rocket to rail. Carver overcommits a bit. Oh, these rockets, man. Oh, he was hoping that the turret would take the flag for him. But Carver's still left so weak after this, so he's he's vulnerable. Buxton needs to make sure he can get on the website. I think he took the rail and LG. And he's going to probably go after Rocket. I think he's going to try and be aggressive again. He's going to go to Connector and he's dropping. He knows where Picava is. He's left a slightly wider gap on the major items. And now he needs to find a way to push in. And he's going to find him in a second. Dude, what are you looking at, Buxter? He takes damage. Still got more than Picava. His positioning's better. Oh, that one was horribly, horribly disgusting. Well played. Boxer just seemed a little bit unaware for a moment, and that really knocked him off. Ow. Yeah, Picava stepped it up a lot since the first game. Two hundred damage rocket. OMG. Can he stay alive? Oh, Picava ends up killing himself. Well, let's see what the spawns uh, do. Who it favors? Heavy's gonna go to nobody. So, I'd... okay, orb has been used though, and rockets found on the floor. I, I, it feels like 
that maybe left Picava's mind for a moment. He knows he's there. He wants to finish the job, and he's going to be able to do it. We've got items that are up. I think he just spotted him. But he can't really justify going over to the heavy. Is he going to do it? I think Picava's late on it. Picava's made a little bit of a misread, or it seems like he's just been flustered and... Mr. Not a big opportunity to get himself the heavy. He could have been under attack, but there should certainly have still been a way out for him. I feel like it was 70%, 80% safe if he went for that heavy on time. Five minute warning. He didn't look over there originally. I think he's lucky not to have taken damage just then. No overcommitments at all. The ledge grab and still gets punished. That's a that's a a good shot actually from Buster. He knows exactly where Picava is. Dude, the timing punishes him so hard. Yeah, time to leave. Time to just stack yourself up. Great split between major items. We're only past the halfway mark recently. Runs into a direct rocket. Dude, he's got to watch out. He's super weak. I think go towards the light armor first. And then get the rocket box. And then heavy. Oh, he finds him straight off it though. That's a smart move from Buxter. Heavy was up, but he doesn't make the obvious rotation and finds Big Harbor with his pants around his ankles. We're tied up three to three. Now it's really hard to tell what's going to happen. He walks in. Big Harbor, this is where the game flipped on its head for him. Big Harbor, uh, Buxter can't make the same mistake. Oh, it doesn't get pushed off. Bucks are still a slight advantage just because of the damage output he's been having on items. Offsetting the heavy a bit more, but Picava is definitely going to know about that. Now he needs to be really careful pushing into this because he, he got punished super hard last time. He's going in. LG close range. Not worth it in my opinion now because you've got to hope you get lucky with the spawns. Picava is going to be able to get onto the Mega, but there's weapons available for Buxer. He left them on the floor? Picava... I'd like him to... I'd like to see him just set up early on the Heavy. Problem is, he's only got the rail, so... I guess, fair enough. I, I think Buxer could have given himself a much more of a dead cert. I think his weapon choices moving into the Rocket and Mega Room were a little bit questionable. Execution wasn't awful, but it was also not awful at all from Picava. Don't get distracted by the turret. Oh, he is hurting, man. He's not he's doing bad. Not bad use of the super nail gun. Really hoping he could get the light first, but he'll take it. I don't know if he heard that bounce pad going, but this is sketchy because at this stage, you really don't want to die. You want to be staying alive. <laughs> that rail is that rail's really big. Little, little bit of LG. Can Picava hold on to it, man? Totally pushed off the map. He's got this dire orb up in 10 seconds. Major items are coming up. Well, I say major items. Major item. Mega is coming up. 15 seconds split on items. This is a really, really diff difficult situation for Picava. I'm going to go over to him because he's the one who needs to get back into the game. And we have to see if he's able to... One minute warning. To pull pull this off and get us over to what well, I imagine if he comes back would make it overtime. Unless he somehow gets a really clean kill. Okay, he's equalized the stacks. They equalize each other there. Oh, 
Oh, that orb just messes up. But Pekava's now just got himself into control. Buxter's got very little to work with. Somehow, Pekava's rail has been pulling it off. He needs to get over towards the heavy. He needs to push it off. This is his item. The rocket's not bad. Oh, this mutual kill in this 25 seconds. Pekava needs the heavy spawn. He hasn't quite got it. He's spawned by the eye, so Buxter's going to get a ton of resources over here. We'll go back over to Picava. Oh, there you are, mate. One rail. Another rail. He can hit one more rail to get... Ah, oh, he's hit three in a row. Picava is tying it up six for six of ten seconds to go as the time of the frag. But he's in a horrible place. He needs to orb out somehow. He's found a health bubble. Bucks are still way stronger than him. Seven HP, dude. He's peeking this. Why are you peeking this? You're absolutely mad. Oh, this Buckster. Buckster's got all the chances right now. Oh my god, he's got a rail and everything and you're facing You've got no rails left. This is game is hard scenario. Oh, Buckster's still going to be able to chase it down. Man, he's stuck over there. All the noise that was being made when he was fighting against the turret. I think he maybe got a little sidetracked from that. Incredible effort for Pekawa and the end of that. Those three rails in a row at the eye was unreal. But Buxter, he just had him on the ropes. He was just still so weak. There's no items up or anything like that. He had to somehow survive for a while and fight his way slowly back in. Really, really, really good game. It's very nice. Uh, what's your game happening? I think I'm going to go over to Buxter Cypher next. See if I can find, like, the start of, uh, of Cypher. Cypher's in-game right now, so he's currently playing his match.